In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brethren, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. He was sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, Grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, he and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, please stay here. The Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you, Elisha replied. And so the two went on together. Fifty of the Gil prophets followed and when the two stopped at the Jordan, they stood facing him in a distance. Elijah took up his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water which divided, and both crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed over, <clears throat> Elijah said to Elisha, Ask for whatever I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha answered, May I receive a double portion of your spirit? You have asked something that is not easy, Elijah replied. Still, if you see me taken up from you, your wish will be granted, otherwise not. As he walked on conversing, a flaming chariot and flaming horses came between them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. When Elisha saw it happen, he cried out, My father, my father, Israel's chariots and drivers. But when he could no longer see him, Elisha gripped his own garment and tore it in two. Then he picked up Elijah's mantle that had fallen from him and went back and stood at the bank of the Jordan. Wielding the mantle that had fallen from Elijah, Elisha struck the water in his turn and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When Elisha struck the water, it divided, and he crossed over. The word of the Lord. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. How great is the goodness, O Lord, which you have in store for those who fear you, and which toward those who take refuge in you, you show in the sight of the children of men. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in you. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men, you screen them within your abode from the strife of tongues. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Love the Lord, all you his faithful ones. The Lord keeps those who are constant, but more than requites those who act proudly. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners, so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to others to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. So today's my solo flight, so y'all get to witness that. And so you might want to strap up, put the, sheet, seat belt, the seats up, and wait for the turbulence. Uh, so it's been a good few weeks since our nation. So uh, just having the opportunity to come back here and actually be in charge uh, is kind of different. But uh, I'm really happy to be here today. And I was reflecting on the readings, and I remembered something I learned from philosophy. They said, if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a noise? So unless someone's there, you would really not know, right? Um, and we can never really answer that question, but the question is, when something happens in secret, does someone know? And I, I was thinking of coming from New Orleans, you know, you come up to a red light if you had to go coming back late from, from Church Point, getting back there, or and you come to a red light, and it's, you know, do you stop at the red light when there's no one around? And they say, if you stop, that's usually a good sign of an ethical person. You're doing what is right when no one is looking. However, a lot of times we do things because people are looking. Like you get a new job, you want to impress people. You want to impress the boss. You are dating, you want to impress this person. You want them to see the best side of you. And I think this is kind of what Jesus was getting to. It's like, what is your motives? When we're doing these things, what is our motive? And in the gospel today, he's referring to these pious acts of of almsgiving, prayer, and fasting, which were required for the, for the Jews. In fact, when he says, when you do these things, he didn't say if you fast or if you give alms. He says, when you give alms, when you fast, when you're praying. So these were required to do. But he refers to the, the hypocrites. So the Pharisees, they were the ones that, that followed these 613 commandments to the T. They wanted to make sure everyone saw them do them because that's how they were known, for the, to be righteous, because they were doing all these things. And Jesus is addressing this issue because he says, when you do this, don't be like the hypocrites. When you're giving alms, don't blow a horn to let everybody know, hey, I'm giving alms, look at me. Or when, you, when you're fasting, don't neglect your appearance so that you look like you're fasting. But he wants you to do these things because they have good value in growing in, in holiness and piety because each of these can help us. When we, if we're struggling with uh, eating too much or food, fasting actually helps us detach from these things that we become so attached to in this world. So fasting, prayer, helps us to know what's in our heart, what, where is our heart, and what is on the altar of our heart, what's most important to us. When we pray, that brings us back to God, who is the center of everything for us. 
when we're, we're um, giving alms, these are required. Jesus says when he comes again, he's going to judge us by what do we do for other people. He says, when I was hungry or thirsty, naked, you know, did you clothe me? All these things are going to be required of us. So these almsgiving are required. But the key is, is how are we doing it? What's our motive? Are we doing them because this is the right thing to do? I see a person in need. I give what they need. I, I know I need to pray. I need to spend time with God because I'm distracted by the things of this world. I spend the time in prayer. I'm, I need to fast because at least twice a week. And this goes back to our early church. They carry this from the Jewish tradition and something called the Didache, which was the earliest writings we have of the church's teachings, says that they fasted on Wednesdays and Fridays because they carried that practice over because it was a good thing. So think for us today is we just need to be aware of our motives. And the church has a tradition of encouraging us to do an examination of conscience at night, taking a few minutes and just reviewing your day and saying, you know, how, was, how did I do, Lord? You know, did I see you, you know, in this person? Did I, did I reach out and serve you? Did I sin? And do I need to repent? And, and just taking that moment in the evening just to reflect, what was my motives in that? And then the next day, repent, ask God to forgive you, and then try to do better the next day. So I think for us today, it's just asking that question, why am I doing what am I doing, that I, whatever I do? Is it, is it to get praise from others? Or is it because it's the right thing to do and that God who sees in secret will repay us? <clears throat> We're going to pray the prayer of St. Joseph. To you, O blessed Joseph, we have recourse in our act of affliction, and having implored the help of your most holy spouse, we now, with hearts filled with confidence, earnestly beg you to take us under your protection. Through that sacred bond of charity, which united you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and by that fatherly love with which you embraced the child Jesus, we humbly beg you to look graciously upon the beloved inheritance which Jesus Christ purchased by his blood, and to aid us in our necessities with your power and strength. Defend the most wonderful guardian of the Holy Family, the chosen children of Jesus Christ. Keep from us, O most loving Father, all blight of error and corruption. Aid us from on high, most valiant defender, in this conflict with the powers of darkness. And just as you once saved a child Jesus from mortal danger, so now defend God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield us by your constant protection, so that supported by your example and strengthened by your help, we may be able to live a virtuous life, die a happy death, and obtain everlasting bliss in heaven. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God. For in good in goodness you created man. And when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you may have helped us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and your sins. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and your sins. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and your sins. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter my world. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. We have protection against the wickedness and snares of the May God be with you in holy prayer. And to the hour of grace of the heavenly cross, the power of God is in heaven. And all the spirits, the power of the world, seeking the Lord themselves. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, and never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection Lord, I have so dear to such a as I have debated, as far as his confidence, and to the word of your words. To thee, Lord, I come, O Lord, I stand, sinful as I am.